Golden Bayin. Hi, and welcome to this episode of Icelandic for Foreigners. In this video, I'm going to be talking about neuter noun declensions. In other words, the patterns that most neuter nouns follow. Now, the tricky thing about neuter nouns is they're hard to identify because they don't have a set ending. A neuter noun in nominative can, ver can end in virtually any consonant or vowel. So the most common ending is there is no ending, and that makes them hard to identify. And really the only way to go about it is, first of all, to recognize that maybe it's not a masculine or a feminine noun, and then also just to learn each word at a time. There is, however, a certain subclass of neuter nouns that often end in an A, and we'll go over those but there are very few of them. So in general, a neuter word can end in just about any letter, but at least the pattern is very simple and straightforward. So let's talk first about these neuter nouns that end in anything. So the word, the example we'll be using is blom, which means flower. So we have nominative blom, accusative blom, dative blomi, and genitive bloms. Now this is a pretty consistent pattern across all neuter words. Especially note how the nominative and the accusative forms are the same. That will always be the case. Now with the definite artal endings, so the flower, we have blomith, accusative blomith, dative blominu, and genitive blomsins. Now the plural is the same as the singular for words like this, blom, accusative blom, dative blomum, and genitive bloma. Also note here how the nominative and accusative, again, are the same. Then with the article we have blomin, blomin, blomunum, and blomana. This pattern holds true for most neuter words. Let's go on to the neuter nouns that end in a. Most of these are body parts. The one we'll be looking at is oiga, I. We have nominative oiga, accusative oiga, dative oiga, and genitive oiga. And then with the article ending, we have oigad, oigad, oiganu, and oigans. Now, we do see a little bit different plural. We have an umlaut, and the a turns into a u, and we have oigu, oigu, oigum, and oikna. Pay special attention to the inserted n. And with the definite article, we have oigun, oigun, oigunum, and oiknana. Other words that work like this are eira, hjarta, and biwa. We're going to look at one of those actually right now. Let's look at hjarta, which means heart. We see that it looks the exact same as oiga in singular, but then in plural, when we turn that a into a u, we also have to change the first a into an ö, and that's just a standard umlaut or sound shift. So plural, we have hjörtu and hjörtu. Hjörtum and hjartna. And the definite articles look pretty much normal. Now let's talk just a little bit more about umlaut, which is a, a vowel shift. When one vowel turns into another one, we'll often see an A turning into an Ö, like we just did in hjarta. But this can also happen with the regular neuter nouns, the ones that don't end in A. So the example we'll look at is bat, which means child. Now you see here that the singular form looks normal. However, when we move to a neuter plural form, if a is the main vowel in the stem, then it turns into an ö in plural. So we have but in nominative, but in accusative, butnum in dative, and batna in genitive. A can also turn into ö, as in the word hundrath, which means hundred which looks normal in singular, but in plural becomes hundruth, hundruth, hundruthum, and hundrada. One more just like that is the word sumar, which means summer, which looks normal in singular, but in plural becomes sumur, sumur, sumrum, and sumra. I know that these patterns are complicated it's a slow process, but you can do it. I believe in you. If you're ever not sure about how a word changes, then pop on to bin 
and type the word in. It'll give you all the different forms. Learn these one at a time. Learn which forms look similar to each other, and you can do it. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and feel free to leave questions or comments below. Tak bless bless.